Hey everybody, Glenn here. So before we get into today's episode of Checking In with Anthony and Glenn, I wanted to say this. If you're listening to this, well then so are your potential customers. So now is the perfect time to advertise on Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. We're right in between a couple of sets of different advertisers. So I just wanted to take today's message to say to you that this is a great time for you to invest in our podcast so we can invest in you and your business and help you drive sales increase awareness and get people to follow you so why don't you just drop me a line i'm glenn at rouse.media that's g-l-e-n-n at r-o-u-s-e dot media and i'll be able to help you oh and if that's not enough to get you involved a couple of times last month the checking in with anthony and glenn podcast was in the top 200 of every single podcast of the united states that's right we're competing against Joe Rogan podcasts. We're competing against NPR's podcasts, all of the Gimlet Media podcasts, all the How Stuff Works podcasts, all of those shows. We are now in the same breath as them from time to time, and there's no better time for you to get your advertising message out. So um, drop me a line, and let's talk, and let's make it happen. And now, let's check in with Anthony, hey, and me, Glenn. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn. Teaching you to be the hotelier that you want to be. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn. Anthony. Where the hell you been? That's a great question, Anthony. I was wondering where the hell have you been? Why haven't you been following me around the country for the last six weeks? I think my plane and your plane <laughs> uh, see each other in midair. But I was last week I was somewhere and I was right. like, and there, I know we've been trying to get in touch with each other, uh, calling each other, but we yep. haven't. We've been texting. And I was like, I think I miss Glenn. Yeah, I definitely know I missed you, Anthony, and I miss the fact that we haven't gotten together in a little while, and I want to apologize to all the listeners out there who've been saying, hey, why is the frequency of the show's dropped off a little bit? Well, that's because uh, it is the thick of conference season, and uh, Anthony, man, you, you are in well demand, and I don't know how it happened. I was in demand this conference season, too, and we've been off doing speaking engagements, getting content around the country for the last couple of months, and it has been fun, and now we are back, and we are in action, yeah. and where are we today, man? Yeah, and this, uh, we're in uh, New York City, and I Actually, this week is um, going to be relatively busy for me. I can't talk about it now, but we're we're doing a couple new things and a new TV show that wow. we're doing a pilot on that I can't really talk about, which would be interesting. I, it's I've going to be a whole new way. Did I tell you about it? Uh, no, you. Well, you did, but uh, I did. Uh, let's. Uh, you told me a couple of a couple of different things. I don't that know. Were I don't know about on. this one, but anyway, well, I don't know. But let's uh, just let's tease so, the, uh, the viewers, so, none, the listeners, nonetheless. You know, we talk about like. We have our people, right? We all have our right. people. Mm-hmm. And in, in business and in friendship, there's some people that are just like, you know, lights out. I always, this is what, this is my new right. word. You haven't uh-huh, heard me uh-huh. say this. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's called kind killers. Kind killers. Kind killers. I and like we're that. Going, not some sort of weird weed reference. Kind, is it? They're kind. <laughs> they're kind, but when they yeah. have to get a job done, lights yeah. out. Right. And so we're going to speak to a friend of mine All right. that you're going to introduce. I am. And also has been uh, my publicist mm-hmm. and is a very famous publicist in the world of that mm-hmm. uh, world. And um, when I think of kind killers, which I coined last week, right. um, I think of her because right. oh. she is kind as could be. I wouldn't mess with her. Excellent. I love that. But before we do that, I do want to let you guys know, hey, I know a lot of you have been out there and been saying, hey, how can we see you guys record live and in person? Well, we're going to be recording at the uh, HX Hotel Experience Show. I believe that's November 10th and 11th, right on the show floor. That's HX Hotel Experience and the BDNY Show. They are combined shows. We'll be on the HX side. I'm also going to be doing a, a great panel discussion one of those days around uh, lunchtime uh, with Bruce Ford of Logic Econometrics. And I'm very, very much looking forward to being there on the show floor at the Javits Center with you, Anthony Melchiori, recording all new shows here. And I'll be with my partners. We're actually rolling out a new company called Hospitality Success. And basically, it's a uh, I call it a non-management company. It's we're giving people the tools to take control of their hotels without having a management company. So we call it a learning company, and we'll actually be launching it at the hotel show. Excellent. Uh, I love it. All right. So let's get into uh, the meat of it, guys. You know, you know how I could get into that show and we will see you there. But today, 
One of the things that um, you folks don't necessarily realize is you wonder, how do we get all of these great guests on the show? Well, some of it is just that we know people and we do it ourselves. But a lot of what you see is when you work with great PR partners. Now, a lot of folks in public relations get a lot of flack. But the truth of the matter is, folks like me, I couldn't do my job without the great help of public relations professionals. They get me access to the people that I want to speak to. They help me come up with great ideas. If uh, Anthony, if you and I were sitting around trying to think of all of the ideas all the time, we would have to plan, I don't know, even harder than we do right now, which I believe is not at all. I make a habit of not thinking. Right. <laughs> I react. I like I've decided, that. I've <laughs> embraced that in my life that I'm not going to think too much. I'm just going to react. All right. So so who's this young lady? All right. So we have uh, Rebecca Brooks. Hello. How are you today? Hi. I'm doing great. All right. So you you do you do PR and you, you, you focus a lot on travel, hospitality, food and beverage, all these great things. I see a giant fork right behind me as we're coming at you from uh, your offices here. What a cool job that you have uh, hobnobbing with all of the uh, the fancy fancies in the uh, the hospitality industry. Well, she is the fancy beverage. fancy. I know. <laughs> so, so exactly. So, Rebecca Brooks. Exactly. I've always asked you this before. Like, define what you do. Wow. Yeah, I know. Wow. Go. Go. Um, well, the, <laughs> we, we are a lifestyle agency and yep. like you said, Glenn, yeah. we have a strong concentration in hospitality, travel, and what I like to say is personalities of purpose. And those are the type of people that make us want to get out of the bed in the morning Interesting. and come and do a great job and be our best selves. So one of the things, um, when we were working together, uh, you made it clear that we promote you, but we don't build your business. Like you build your business and we promote you. So tell me about that. Yeah, that sounds interesting because for, for me, I see PR people as promoting. Well, first of all, first of all, when he, he says PR people, are you offended by that? Are you a PR per- no. people? What? Yeah, no. Well, I, don't know. I don't know. By that? I don't know. Some people like some people don't like being called PR people. I've, I've had that problem. I don't know. But so w- when you say, are you a publicist, a, p- a public relations person, or a lifestyle? What did you? What was the? How'd <laughs> well, you open I was saying it? we're a lifestyle agency. It, a lifestyle and agency. Publicist, PR person. It's it's, it's vir- all the same. It's virtually the same. Right. So so t- if I'm a young person in hospitality or just a young person, you know, trying to find my way. And I wanted to be Rebecca Brooks. What is what does Rebecca Brooks do? So we are in charge of everything media related for our clients. So to answer your question, I mean we through media we help our clients build their brand. And uh, I think where people get confused is where do PR people start um, and end, and where do agents and managers right. and marketing? That's so a great it's a it's a big. Well, I feel like um, uh, from from my side of things, being that I've been in in this business for twenty plus years, and I've even worked in uh, public relationships, public relations, which did not suit my personality very well. Um, but I see it as if I was a client of yours, I would want to have opportunities within the media, in print media, on the internet, in video media, that'll present me and my brand so I could help build my personal brand, which will create a lot more notoriety about who I am as an individual, which will then naturally lead to more opportunities that I can have to, uh, to leverage that personal brand that you've helped me create. Absolutely. So it, it depends on each person's goal. So some people hire us to promote their product. So it's like straight sales. Yep. Other people, they're building their personal brand, right. which, you know, if people are reading about them. If they're look, seeing them on TV, it leads to other opportunities. Right. So essentially what you, what you do is you help, um, you help cut through the media clutter to help bring focus onto the clients and places or hotels that you happen to be working with. When I was looking for a publicist, right. I called a friend of mine. And if you know him from TV, Mark Summers, you know he's a real fun guy and he's great. I think he's the best host. And But if you know him personally, you know he's a tough SOB. He doesn't play. play. And I said to him, I said, I'm thinking about hiring Rebecca Brooks uh, to, work, to work with her. And he said, without hesitation, the best in the business. Period. End of story. Wow. And, and, and when you're looking at her walls right now, cause I know she won't, she won't tell you who her clients are, but I will. Andrew Zimmerman, uh, Guy Fieri, um, uh, Jacques Torres, the chocolate man, 
uh, myself, uh, and many, 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 many others. <laughs> um, and when you're working with the best of the best, not that I'm the best of the best, um, unless you ask Glenn. Oh, you are the best of the best. Thank sir. you. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I, there, there's a certain responsibility. So you take, one of the things I noticed about you over the years, we've become friends, but one of the things I noticed about you is, and I think this is really important, that when someone comes to you as a client, you're interviewing them probably more than they're interviewing you. I remember being nervous when I met you. It was like, and you know me, I can talk to a wall. And I remember it was a good meeting. We talked for an hour and I didn't stop talking and I fell in love and I was like, this is amazing. I want to be here. I don't want to be anywhere else. And is that but because I re- a woman finally but, let you talk for more than five minutes? <laughs> but I also did really feel like I was like, like I was being approved or disapproved. So tell me about that process. I want to talk about that day for a second, because okay. okay. when you were coming in, I was really excited. Um, in addition to working with, with Andrew Zimmern, we worked with Samantha Brown and a few other people in, in travel. And um, I, when you were coming in, I said to my team, all right, everything has to be perfect. <laughs> now, right. I'm, I'm pretty like... A, OCD? O, I, mm-hmm. All right, you said it. Um, I do like things to be just so, and I want them to be the best that they can be. So when you were coming in, I really wanted it to be I didn't know that yeah oh yeah um and the we had an amazing meeting we we totally connected Mm -hmm. um true I was interviewing you I wanted to know um everything about you I wanted to know what your goals are and also like are you going to be a good client are we going to be successful for you um and yes what was the moment did you remember the moment when you felt like okay I can work with this guy because I was nervous. I I, I want because I knew I wanted to it's work fascinating with Fascinating that you were uh, you were nervous. Well, you situation. know when Mark Summers says she's the best, right? And Mark Summers, like I'm telling you, people don't know. Like he's a dear friend of mine, right. so I know him, and he he is hard. I mean, he expects perfection. So when he said that, then I it wasn't like I well should I go with her? It's like well, does she like me? No, I knew I knew the moment that well we were. I think we got personal, and there were some tears in the room. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was it. I was like, "Oh my God, he is—he's my people. I want to work with him, and, yeah. and we're yeah. going to be." And friends. that's how I when I when I when I introduce you or talk about you, I say she's my people, right? I so I and actually we're going to we're going to interview another person today, Carrie Lachlan, who's our who designer on one of my shows. And I feel like the same way. She's she's our people. Like as soon as you meet her, like she'll be your people. And anyway, and right. the biggest compliment you gave me was you like you noticed all right. the details. Mm-hmm. You noticed um, when you asked for the restroom, I got up and I walked you to the restroom and you made a comment like that's hospitality and all the, like the little things that mm-hmm. that we kind of went out of our way that day to make sure we're just right. You noticed that made me feel so good. Well, one of my designers, I think it was Blanche Garcia, said the little things are the big things. And I think that that, that is absolutely uh, critical. Um, what does, so try to explain, because I, I, I always have a tough time explaining it, so Try to explain if I was a person, it could be a business person, could be a celebrity, who, but I wanted to get myself out there. Tell me how, how you go about doing that. Like, tell me what the process is. Process. Yes, absolutely. So for us, the key is how to we, how do we determine the point of difference of the person, of the product? Because the, the market is so cluttered, right? And not hospitality and travel in right. wellness and beauty, like every category is saturated. So how are we going to tell your story in a way that people are going to listen? And do you have it? I mean, there is a thing called that we call it. Right. Right. So do you have the, the magnetic personality? Are you willing to work hard to be our partner? Um, because it, some people think, oh, I'm going to hire a PR person, and then they turn, they like flip a switch, and right. then we just go and do our thing. There's so much work involved because it is a true partnership, right? We are experts in positioning and promoting and coming up with a strategy. And of course, we have all the relationships, and you are the expert in, you know, in travel and in business. So it's like, how do we, how do we work together to tell your story in a way that cuts all the clutter? How's there been a situation where someone wanted to work with you that was rel- relatively well known, but you were just like, 
just probably not going to be a good relationship. So you you declined it. Yeah, so be sure to tell us who they are and what the exact problem was. <laughs> <laughs> um, Without mentioning see. names or getting even you're, close to it. Now you're rooting it, Anthony. <laughs> yes. Actually, yeah, ap- yes, definitely. And for me, the most, well, there were several really important things is um, – are we going to enjoy working with this person? Are we going to make them happy? Can they ever be happy? Um, and um, is my staff going to be happy? Right? Are they going to not right. want to quit because this client is so difficult? Right. And that's really, really critical. Has there been a situation where you said maybe uh, this maybe not the right person and then somehow they beg their way in and then you're like, you know what, this did work out or vice versa where it didn't work out? Has that been a situation? Yes, definitely. Where it's worked that, out? It didn't Both. work out. It didn't work So there was this person I, I wanted to work with for a long time and truly like known in the business and um, awesome on... Mm. On TV? Yeah. And it, I don't, it, it, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Uh, so we won't even go around. Yeah. We won't go because you're uncomfortable. Uh, well, let's I, not talk I, about yeah, well, I, li- I like that you're making her uncomfortable. But, <laughs> but, the, but there has been a situation where you kind of went against your gut, worked with the person, it didn't work out, and then it, it had a end. Yes. So I think that's... So the, there was a situation right. where we had the opportunity to work with this um, an amazing person on television. And what happened was I, I had a feeling might be a little difficult, but I thought, okay, well, you know, we deal with all sorts of personalities, right. so we, we will be fine. And... Um, <laughs> It, We've all made it that wasn't mistake. the case. Actually, right. it was so challenging. Um, it was it was really shocking behind right. the scenes. So it just it just wasn't right. And one thing I've learned, I mean, I've had this, but business. you knew going into it that that was a risk because you already learned that lesson. But you didn't trust your gut because you were taken in back by taken in by who this person was. Absolutely, right? Glenn. And I was just about to say that um, even though I started this company when I was twenty five and. In 1995, um, there are so many things I've been learning over the past mm-hmm. few years. And one of them is it's so basic, but you have to listen to your gut. And when you are running a business, you have to have values, right? And the val- you, the second you waver on a value and you think, oh, this person has right. like five out of six, it'll be okay. You're in trouble. No, it uh, never works. Never works. And I think that really is the uh, the bigger issue that we all need to think about. When you're starting off your career, I think you're much more likely to make those kinds of compromises and mistakes. I can make it work because I need I need this break or I need this opportunity that's going to be happening. So it's in, it's great to see that even though you had already attained that level of success, you could still make those same those same mistakes. Learning all the time. All the time. And right. the second you say you know everything, you're in trouble. So if you, I follow you obviously on Instagram and you know, you're, you have, you have a great balance into your life. But before we go into other parts of your life, because I want to talk about your obsession for great food because I live <laughs> through you and watching how wonderful, uh, your, uh, just, just love the way you guys, uh, think about food and, 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 uh, just amazing. So, but before we do that, there's also a part of your Instagram story where you're on a Today Show, you're on the Rich Ray Show, you're on here, you're there, you're like, you know everyone, you get your clients on every show. Uh, you know, I, one of the things um, that I said to you sometimes, like, I can't, like, enough with the interviews. Like, I had so many interviews and so many articles, I couldn't keep up with it all. So, you're in the middle of New York City, literally, your office is in the middle of New York City. And you have connections to everyone, which is amazing. But you started at 25, and now you have one of the biggest, most successful uh, PR c- companies in the in the country. Tell me how you started your career at 25 years old, and tell me how scary it was. Yeah, that's a great question, because at 25, I was still trying to figure out how the hell to get out of my parents' house. <laughs> you're, still, you're still trying to figure out how to get out of your parents' house. <laughs> no, well, you, they live with me now, okay? I'm just... Just so, kidding. So, we have so, so, so tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's interesting you say how scary it was. And I think when you're that age, you, you don't really know any better and you don't know how, well, at least I didn't realize how, how scary it was. Um, I, ma- believe it or not, majored in PR. And I had no idea really if I wanted to be in PR. I didn't know what I wanted to do. 
So I'm like, all right, I'll try, I'll try PR. And what I realized early in my career is that I had a knack for new business and I could deal with so many different types of personalities. So one of my first jobs was at a big international PR firm and I had five bosses. And on my first day, I learned that, well, four men and one woman. And I, I learned on my first day that the woman couldn't hold an assistant for more than a week. That's a clue right there. I, I was like, great. Well, I'm going to conquer her. And sure enough, I, um, I was, I lasted a whole year and actually I, I left that agency because I, I realized I wasn't excited about the clients that I was working on and I needed to find an agency that had clients that could, you know, I, I could connect to. So I left that agency. I went to another, a, a small agency and it was, I really had an absentee boss and I had to sink or swim. And during that time I learned I had a knack for new business and right. I started to bring in clients. And long story short is that I took those clients and I started my own agency. And what was amazing about those clients is they were entrepreneurial women who were inventors and they were told, you know, this will never right. be a success. And, you know, they basically said, F you to everyone, I'm going to make it into something. So, um, they were very inspirational. One of them was a woman named Dini Shack and she invented the hair Dini and she made, uh, she went from zero to 20 million in less than two years. Holy cow. And it was during, during that time. I mean, that was in the nineties and that was tremendous hair Dini. Remind me. It was a bendable foam covered wire that you wrap up in your hair and make an instant French twist. Okay. And I remember that. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yes. So she was my first, well, one of my first clients and uh, she was so inspirational. And you know what? When I started the business, it was just me. I I hired my brother-in-law who, as my assistant and I did absolutely everything. And I have so many memories of going on the road with Dini and doing right. all the morning shows and talk shows. I was the hair model, model. And, um, she was super inspirational. And I had this other client who developed a product called Curves. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, a silicone gel insert that you put in your bra. So it was when, um, Breast implant, there was so much going on with breast implants and people were getting really sick. So right. she said, let me take the silicone gel and, um, put it on the outside. Right. Mm-hmm. So you slipped it into your bra and that became a huge craze as well. And so many people knocked, uh, that product off, but I also was the model for curves. Okay. And I will never forget like going on Montel Williams. Oh, Do you remember that I show? Really doing know. before and afters. I did. I just, I think I was on every morning and talk show you can think of doing either curves or hair Dini. Wow. That's and pretty so, cool. So, How about uh, Sally, Jesse, you Raphael? Know, but, 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 Actually, no, not that one. <laughs> I find that very interesting because you, you're you here, you're wanting to make your client successful. And somehow this 25-year-old kid who had real no interest in being on morning talk shows is now the person having... First of all, you know what it feels like now to be on a talk show and the nerves and what it takes to yeah, do it. Yeah, that was but scary. But also it's like... You like you go from nowhere to being on the Montel Williams show, being with a person that goes from zero to twenty million, all because you wanted to. I think yeah. that's fascinating. I think that's lost on a lot of people. Yeah. It's because you dreamed it and you made it happen. Yes, a- absolutely. And and you know what? It you you have to do you do what you need to do for your clients mm-hmm. to make them successful, to make them happy. Whether it's, I mean, I've taken clothes off my body, earrings. Like what, whatever they need, um, you know, with right. yeah, I get when it. they're going on TV, I mean, right, yeah. right. Um, whatever they need to get the job done. And so when was the moment during this period, I would imagine you were still challenged financially. I'm sure it was hit and miss, you know, so much were good, so much were bad. Um, when did you walk into it when you knew, ah, like the music went off and, you know, and then you were like, okay. We're doing this. Like, when did you know this was going to stick? Sometime next year, she's hoping. Yeah. I can't <laughs> tell you when you're talking to your mom. When did you know? I said sometime next year, she's hoping. Yeah. Um, that is, that's a really hard question I mean, do to you answer. really ever get to that point is kind of what I'm joking it, about. It's so, it's so challenging. Right. And one thing that I've learned is to accept and anticipate the roller coaster. 
Because yeah. you think, oh, if I just get one more client, then I'll be able to totally do this. I live my life like that. Or I'll be able to take a deep breath. Right. There are definitely moments where you're like, wow, this is, am I here? Mm-hmm. Pinch myself. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I remember moments like that when I was at Oprah. That was incredible. Yeah. So that. tell me about that. Tell me about Oprah. I've been a few times. Okay. And um, Did you get a car? Did I get? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the audience that day. I was backstage. <laughs> oh, you were there the day they, they gave away cars? No. no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I, I booked um, Dini, who we were just talking about, and the Curves client on Oprah. That was in the late 90s, and that was amazing. That was a taped piece. They were both in it. It was like it was absolutely incredible. Um, the first time I went to the studio was when we represented Rachel Ray. We were her first PR team, and we worked with her for four years, leading up to her daytime talk show. Mm-hmm. And in fact, you know, we pitched Oprah for three years, right. and it was a, always a no, no, no. Finally, it was a yes, and she and I were on book tour. And um, I, yeah, I remember being there that day, and it was it was really incredible. And did did you get to meet her and spend time with Oprah at all, or it, briefly? Okay, briefly. What she was her, the, what was the aura around her? Like, what was the like? What was were people afraid or were people like inspired by her? What yeah, was the feeling? No, it was a really um, it was amazing energy. Right. People was, were really kind, and you had mentioned that it factor, right? I'm wondering if yeah. you could feel it coming off of her because uh, yeah. I, when I've met um, people like Bill Clinton, for example, when they walk in the room. You're a presence. hit with that feeling of that yeah, presence, definitely, right? Definitely, definitely a presence. Um, that was the first time I went. And the second time I went, I was, I represented um, Katie Lee, who was Katie Lee Joel at the time. Right. So we were launching her cookbook and um, to really get the job done, we needed Billy to perform. Mm. That day, so he and his band came and. So just so people know who you're talking about, uh, Billy Joel. I don't no, know. Billy. Uh, who, who are we talking about? Billy Joel. Yeah. Billy Joel. We all talk about Billy yeah. Joel. All right, yeah, I was yeah. a confused. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Billy Joel. Okay. I jumped right gotcha. to my second. Gotcha. Oh, that, actually, that was my third Oprah time. But okay. anyway, that that was pretty magical. Um, Glenn and I were talking yep. about being Long Islanders. You know, I grew up going to all his concerts and Nassau Coliseum, Bridge yep. Tour, '87. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good year. Um, anyway, so that that was really an incredible experience as well. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I want to I want to know. I want to go back to this uh, getting out of your comfort zone thing. Mm-hmm. So there came a point where you were working for someone, and you said, "I've got to do this on my own," and I see an opportunity. Yeah. Not only the practicality of how you went about doing it and taking clients with you, but how emotionally did you get yourself prepared? for whatever was going to come next and the possibility and the very real potential that you could fail at yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually never thought about failing. I just, I, I had these clients that um, I wanted to work with me. It didn't matter where I was. And they were, again, they were like so, ins- they were very inspirational and I never really considered failing. Um, starting a PR firm, you, it's a PR is a service and you need a computer, you need certain contacts, and... and the ability to tell a really good story, I would say, uh, yeah. as well, yeah. and to be able to frame the conversation, to get um, folks' interest. So if you have those um, natural skills, then I think yeah. you could go a really long way. But I yeah. think it's interesting that you said you never thought about uh, failure right. as a real uh, a possibility. Um, and I think a lot of folks out there kind of get hung up with the notion of if I try this, I'm going to fail. So I might as well be safe and, and not follow my dream. Right. I knew how to do PR. I didn't know how to run a business. Right. So that, that part was a little challenging. Um, my husband, however, he went to, uh, we both went to BU. He was in the school of management. I was in communication. So he, he knew, he, he knew business. You. So right. he helped. And, um, so I always lean, I leaned on him a lot and I still do to, you know what, you know what I find amazing about you? No matter when I'm around you, I always get this feeling that you have tremendous amount of appreciation for everything around you. Like you never take anything for granted and grat- you live in gratitude. Like I've never said that to you before, but I, any time, whether you have a new client or a new office like we're in now or a new person that comes to work for you, you always seem to be grateful and like you never take anything for granted am i right absolutely 
um, I feel I am very grateful for everything. And um, I think also when you lose someone really close to you, Mm -hmm. and which in my case was my mom, you realize, wow, you have to take a step back Mm -hmm. and realize and appreciate what you have. And of course, I mean, I, I appreciate that every day. I have two amazing kids and an amazing husband, and I love my team and my, my clients. How so. old were you when you lost your mom? 32. Wow. And that was, and you guys were best friends. She, she was, I was extremely close to her. Yeah. She and, was my cheerleader. She was the one that was like, uh, you can do it. And anytime, um, I needed a pep talk or she, she just generally was always super positive and such a good person. Yeah. And, um, how does she show up today? Like when you're doing something, do you still not to get too personal, but do you, do you still find her like cheering you on? Always. Absolutely. Cause I know you I feel just really changed, connected to her. Still. You just changed offices and that was a big deal, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So was that very challenging? Like moving offices and because I mean, wh- where were you? A couple blocks away, right? Yeah, I was just a couple blocks away. Um, but it seemed like transformational for you. It seemed like there was a, a spirit. Yes, like- and you know what I did this time is um, for this move. About one year ago, I wrote down exactly my vision for the office, and not only just like what it looked like, but how I felt when I walked in the door. And I felt like when I was writing, and we've only been here a few months, so I did this even before I started looking right. for space. Um, and when I wrote it out, I definitely felt like my mom with me. And anyway, here we are today. It is literally, if you were to read it, you would say, wow. Like down to the colors. Like I said, I had a pop of neon, and then you have like the neon, little neon green over there. And it's right. just like every little detail is exactly as I, yeah, I guess, when manifested. I, when I first came in a couple of weeks ago, you, you were very excited and mm-hmm. you were like showing me a newborn yeah. child. Yeah. Yeah. And it so is very excited. comfortable. Thank you. So, what's been the biggest challenge in running your business? Like, it could have been a moment or it could be to this day. What's the mm-hmm. biggest challenge in this world? In, uh, publicity, PR, dealing with big personalities because every person you deal with, I mean, they're not on TV or radio or whatever they're doing because they're quiet and meek. They're pretty strong personalities. So what's the biggest challenge? I I wouldn't say there's just one. Um, Depends on how you're feeling every morning. <laughs> well, she's very Absolutely. fortunate because she has wonderful right. clients like me I, that, that makes so her blessed. life very easy. So blessed. Yeah. I would say one. One of the biggest challenges is when you work with a person, right? You become really close to them. I'm I'm a very sensitive person, and I, you know I try to kind of I try to detach a little bit, but I you know I've I've accepted that it's not who I am, so I become attached, and I care so much, right? And so if and when that person leaves, it's it's really hard. And I definitely remember my first heartbreak. It was the biggest lesson. The biggest lesson I've ever learned. And in, in public relations, it's inevitable that those relationships are going to change over time. I think um, it, it, this happens with all public relations uh, agencies, all publicists. There's a lifespan to that relationship where it's um, optimally effective for both sides, mm-hmm. right? But, yes and no. But you've right? had clients for – like I'm looking at Andrew yeah. Zimmerman and Guy Fieri. You have had them for years. Yeah. yeah. So let's hear a yes and no answer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess you're, you're right. So Guy – Andrew and Jacques have been clients for eight years. And if you were to say, do I feel there's a lifespan with them? I would say no. Mm-hmm. Um, but there have been cases where I've worked with other companies for, let's say, three years. And I feel like, okay, this lifespan, right. Mm-hmm. this is right. It, it's right for us to not be together anymore. So and can that you recently talk about, happened. Can you talk about the first heartbreak? Who it was or no? Okay, no. but how long, how long was it? <laughs> now, when you say, how long ago was it? No, it was, it was you, Anthony. It was you. <laughs> no, how, meaning, I don't yeah. know if people can understand, yeah. because I know you, so I know what you put into it. it understand, was, what do you mean a heartbreak? It's a client. Like, what uh, does that mean that you had your first heartbreak? Well, you know, without saying who it was, it was really my first dose of showbiz. Right. You know, you, you hear like, oh, the biz of showbiz and like mm. people are so, um, tough and, and it's like hardcore. It really was in this case. So 
it was someone who I imagine would be a client forever and super close, but this person really lost control, if you will, of making certain decisions and didn't handle it well. And, um, yeah, it was just shocking. How many years? Because were you it was together? a little bit of, there's so much more to the story, but, um, behind the scenes, there was a little bit of a, I felt like set up. Mm. People were saying things that I said and did that I, that never, that frankly weren't true. So it, it was just a, how many years, how many years ago? No. How many years were you together? Oh, um, more than four, more than four. Wow, interesting. Yeah. And, it's, and this really is related because I'll talk from my perspective, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I hired Rebecca, I was, I was, I had, I think, two shows at the time. And I was very vulnerable in the sense of I don't like a lot of people and I don't trust anyone. It's just who I am. But when I trust, it's full. Kind of like with Glenn, when we yeah, started totally. doing this, it's full. Uh, when I worked with you, I think you've always felt that it's like, I'm in and like, you hurt me and I'm going to get hurt. I don't care because I trust fully, but it's very vulnerable. So, so the relationships that you have, and I'll talk about this. I know I've mentioned this to you before, but I'll mention it now is I remember it was Chris, but maybe two years ago, three years ago, I don't know how long ago it was Christmas morning and I was going to be on today's show and I don't remember what we were doing. Um, but it was, I've been on today's show maybe five times and it was Christmas morning and li- listen, I don't do anything on Christmas morning, right? But it's, you know, it's today's show. So you're not mm-hmm. saying no to right, the totally. show. So it was pouring rain. It was six o'clock in the morning. Right. And guess who showed up on Christmas morning? <laughs> she did. My friend wow. Rebecca. That's and she amazing. has, and she has many people working for her, but she made sure she was there. And that meant something to me. Yeah. It still means something to me. That was such a fun day. Right. Yeah, it was fun. Was I remember sat in those morning. little seats, but yeah. I remember, I didn't, even though it was the day show, I remember I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it because Crazy. it was, it was Christmas morning. And I, you know, and, and I think you would say this about me. I, I'll say it about myself. And I don't know if you agree, but I, do I seem like a person that's a fame whore, like wants to be famous? I'm not that guy. Right. And just so like, yeah, of course, Today Show is always my, my dream to be called to be on Today Show. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just really, I remember it was rainy and she goes, no, I'll be there. And when she showed up, I was like, holy shit, she's here on <laughs> Christmas morning. I just thought that was great. So you developed this relationship and this person that like, it's more than any other person that I deal with in my business that I remember that connection it's the most important connection because I felt most vulnerable and I don't know why. Right. Well, it's also always understanding the why, like the why behind what we do mm-hmm. and the why behind how, you know, how we do what we do. Yeah. I think it was, it was very thoughtful, um, the way you go about it. And I remember that, um, when Marriott merged right. with, Starwood. um, Starwood, um, I was the first person that AP, uh, SAP called you, you called me, mm-hmm. and uh, you probably don't know the behind the s- scenes of this, but you asked me or someone on your team asked me, hey, can yeah. you talk to AP about the merger of Starwood and, and Marriott, which is obviously a big deal right. in our industry. And I said, absolutely. I said, well, they're going to call you in 20 minutes. And I don't think I've told you this. <laughs> so I called my assistant and I said, hey, listen, I need you to bullet statement every, like do like 20 bullet statements and I need these questions answered, and I need to know how many, once they're merged together, how many uh, brands will they have, right. which of the brands you think will go, which of the brands you think will stay. Put all that together. I'm driving. I can't write anything down. I can't look anything up, and I'll be in my driveway in 20 minutes, literally 19 minutes, so I have one minute between reading it and between getting on Ooh. with the AP, and it literally hit my mailbox in 19 minutes. I read it in a minute. They called me and boom, you can look at a, you can look at the article online right, today. Yeah. And I nailed it. But I remember there's two things going through my head. One, I was privileged to be the guy they called, right? right? And that, that I had a publicist that got that call, number one. And number two, not screwing up because I didn't want Rebecca to get mad. At me. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing we do is we monitor the media every morning and whenever there's something that's happening in the news, that's that's relevant for our clients. Right. We want to make sure that our client, because we have these amazing experts, um, are thought of first. So, so we're so, proactive in that way. So, so all right, that's a good. That's, let's start there. Where, how does it work? I mean, so that's one of the things that you do. So, say you have um, a, a chef as a mm-hmm. client, and you see, I don't know, some I don't know, something interesting. Um, <laughs> you would call who? Like, how does that work? So, let's say there's a trend. 
Right. right? That people Let's say like the no tipping trend or something like that when that yeah. exploded. Right. That exactly. So then we would um, connect with our clients who are in that business and see, you know, what they have to say about it and then proactively go out and pitch it. But I'd also like to say that she probably has a lot of relationships and her team has relationships that they're, she's they're already in that top of mind kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. So if so-and-so writer from a particular publication is writing about this particular trend, you've already fought for that mind share and they're probably going to reach out to you as opposed to somebody else. Definitely. Right? Yes. We're, you, we're top of mind. Yeah. And then we're top of mind because we have amazing clients, but mm -hmm. we're also top of mind because we're accountable. Right. And you're we doing always, the hard work. Yes. We always do what we say. Right. In a timely manner. Yeah. And that's a, that's a lesson everybody should uh, take away. If you're wondering how these machinations work behind the scenes is that you have been at this uh, since 1995, nearly 25 years now, building those relationships that are really, uh, really important in order for the, you know, to, to have these editors think of you top of mind. So for me as an editor, you know, I, I have, I pride the relationships that I have with a lot of great public relations yeah. people because I could call them for stuff. They could call me for stuff. We can have conversations that will do neither of us any good whatsoever, but it builds that relationship yeah. towards the, uh, towards the future. Absolutely. And when you're starting out, um, you may not, a lot of people don't realize how important those contacts are. So it, it doesn't matter where anyone in the media is, meaning what outlet they're at, if you might not, might not be like a big target for you, but that person could move to your biggest yes. outlet. And you know what? Always be kind and rem remember that right. and it have, will come back to you. Do you remember 25 years ago where there was one person you worked with was maybe like, you know, pushing paper and all of a sudden now is like CEO of a major <laughs> corporation? I mean... I, not that exact example, but so many people right. who I started out with well, all these people who are now running. Yeah, they're they're running. They're editor in chiefs right. of magazines, and they're they're in in high positions of power. And they always make sure that they tell people to use Rebecca because you know you you develop a relationship. <laughs> yeah. And I think you know, especially like you said, people starting out trust. Right? I don't care what business yeah. you're in, trust is everything. Yeah. It's if you say you're going to do something, you better do it. And I think it is so important and i think that's kind of what i get from you it's like you like if one of your people on your team made a mistake where um they didn't follow through with something you said that we were going to follow through with i mean i'd imagine you bring that home and that devastates you because your word is everything right right and and look everyone makes mistakes um and owning up to them is, is critical just like we try to teach our kids <laughs> Right, I mean, right. it's the same thing yeah, with our all clients, human, and with we're our all staff. Going to, uh, I, we're all going to make this. I just had an incident <laughs> with one of my children that um, literally looked me in the eye and goes, tell me you wouldn't have lied to your mom about that. And I was like, um, <laughs> you totally uh, I couldn't answer that question. <laughs> but uh, it had to do with a dent on my car, but I'll just leave it uh, at that. Yep, uh, yep. And, um, but she may be listening to this in the car one day, so I better <laughs> stop. Um, so what is the most... If you look at the day you started 25 years ago in your own business and today, what is the thing that kind of stands out the most, like yes. 25 years later? Yes. I love that question because I was thinking about it recently. Mm -hmm. right. There's even though we've worked with so many different types of clients over the years for the first eight years, it was, it was beauty right? and fitness. Um, and, and we've worked in, as you, you know, as I've mentioned, hospitality and travel and business and design, um, and tech. And when I think about the theme that really ties every, all the clients, almost all the clients together over the years is they're entrepreneurs, they're hustlers, they're trailblazers. And even though, you know, you might, you might not realize it, but someone like Guy Fieri, we, um, we worked with Gary Vaynerchuk, um, Lori Grenier, who you might know from Shark Tank, and even some of the emerging talent we work with today, they're all blazing trails, and, and they are entrepreneurs, and they work so hard. I mean, there is no such thing as an overnight success, and it takes a, it takes a team. It absolutely takes a But that's, it, it that's what's amazing to me that people don't understand, especially uh, the younger generation. I hate separating into generations, but... And I saw, I've seen Andrew Zimmerman, right? And I, I know his schedule. Oh my God, that guy outworks me every day. 
and Gary V or or Guy Fieri. It was like even talking about the Kardashians. It's like my daughter said, "Well, they don't work hard." No, 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 they work really hard. I don't believe in their product, and I don't really want to buy anything that they sell. But don't ever tell me that these people don't work hard. I mean, just right. going to to get breakfast is hard because one is everybody looking at them, and two, they've got to look perfect every time. Right? It's just so much energy, and I I've always been good at if I'm doing three TV shows or two podcasts or, or I'm traveling, whatever, I've always done a good job in managing my personal life and my health. Mm. And I look at some of these other people that are out there and they work 10 times harder than me and have maybe 10 times more than I have. I don't know how they do it because I can't do it. Like I have to manage a certain way. I don't work on Saturdays and Sundays if I don't, if I don't have to unless I'm traveling or Lucky something. You. I shut down on Saturdays and Sundays. I mentally try to shut down. Well, that's, and, that helps you become successful. You, but that's I see what you a lot of these other people that 24 7. Gary V. Gary V doesn't he shut doesn't down never Sunday stop. night. No. Gary V watches the Jet game, and, and but then he goes back to work. Oh, uh, he'll be up on on the weekends going to uh, you know to uh, uh, garage sales and stuff like that just to to shoot more video because he enjoys doing <laughs> Content that. Content so is well king. Shoot video. <laughs> yeah. I, so 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 everybody, everyone has got to find their own balance. Right. But every single person that you just mentioned works their butt off. Absolutely. And they have to be counted on. That's another thing. Like today, we all had to be here, right? So we said we'll be here at 10 o'clock. I came in maybe 10, 10 on purpose because I couldn't find... Uh-huh. No, 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 uh-huh. no, hold on. Uh, purpose. No, 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 purpose. I don't mean on purpose. <laughs> no, no, what I mean is because not, I don't like being late, meaning I had a little problem finding parking. Right. But then I took 10 minutes... To eat my breakfast that I didn't yeah, have time to it. grab yeah. because this morning I, I wanted to go to the gym. So I spent 10 minutes eating outside in front of your building, knowing you were here setting up, knowing you were here, knowing everything was cool, and I'd come in and we'd be ready. Yeah. So I don't interrupt. Because you I, needed that to be... I, I didn't want to come your, in mm-hmm. in a rush. Mm-hmm. I'm hungry. I don't feel right. I wanted to come in and go to work. Yeah. And I just think when you're in a business, I trust you. And I trust you that if you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. And I think that that is a word that is so critical. Like trust is not a word that you can, um, you know, it's not 75%. Like if you're working with a client, like we're, um, there's a client that hopefully will be your client January 1 that's a friend of mine. And there was a process for you. You had to go look at their space. You had to find if they were right. Like, and there's a whole process because they're going to trust you and you're going to trust them. Right. Absolutely. And it's so important to take care of yourself and, and make the time, right? So we both, it's like making time to work out, making time for whether it's two or 10 minute meditation, just whatever makes, sets you up for success. Yeah. I relax while looking at your Instagram. Her, 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 her food yeah. porn is amazing. Her husband and her are like just foodies. So, so tell me about your food, your food porn life. Tell me about like, like, yeah, you know, I, it, it's interesting. Um, you know, my mom always cooked growing right. up. My, my husband is an incredible cook. He, and he loves it. it that's his meditation. And I, I was never really into it until Rachel Ray became a client mm-hmm. and, just like Dini Shack, it's like, if I can do what you can do it, that was Rachel, you know? And for me, that, that was inspiring. Like, hell, I thir- you know, we, at the time it was 30 minute meals. Right. I can do this. And, um, she definitely empowered me. And that's another theme for all my clients. They're so empowering, um, to t- take up cooking and, and enjoy it. And that confidence. But isn't so. that amazing? Again, going back to this young girl who started her business 25 years old and her influencer was Rachel Ray, one of the most iconic people ever in, in the food business and on TV. Well, she wasn't and, at the time. And then you had such a, <laughs> but you had such she a, she helped. Right. But I'm saying you had such a connection to her oh. that, Ra- that you can literally reference Rachel Ray in her beginning life that you helped her and she helped you become a lifelong foodie. I mean, just that is crazy. Right. Certainly and, doesn't hurt to, know her that well and get other clients on the show and then when you know when that door closed so many doors open and that's another major lesson that i learned and to like trust in that this is what is meant to be so that door closed and i've worked with the most incredible people in, in the food world and um but when the door when the door closes 
there's a difference between the door slamming and the door huh. slamming uh, softly yeah. or closing softly. And I, I would imagine that most of your clients that either decided to move on and decided they don't need a publicist, the door closed softly. Yes. It didn't close like... There's only a small handful that I close that door real tight. Right, like right. the one you were referring <laughs> to before. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, and there have been clients that, that have come back, m- many. And... Um, yeah, it, t- it takes a special type of relationship. I mean, you have to because if you're coming back, um, then then you know it's it's really for the for the long term. What and, was one of your bucket list uh, moments where you were able to check it off on your bucket list because one of your clients, like because you knew oh, a client yeah. or whatever? Oh. Give me a bucket list moment. Uh, yes, uh, this, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I was very excited for this. I, I couldn't even sleep last night. That is true. Um, I would say when I went to the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, wow. with Guy. Oh wow! Yes, that was. I mean, that was. It was really incredible. So t- t- talk us through that process. I want to know. Um, you know, booking your clients on late night is is such a is such a coup, and we've yeah, right. we've been to just about every show, and. Uh, yeah, I would say that that, yes, that was my first time going and going with Guy was my first time meeting Jay Leno and just you get on the set and talk about energy and magic. Um, definitely I felt it, I felt it even more than, um, Oprah in that he, Jay Leno was such a, a force and it was such a, I guess it was such a huge bucket list. And growing up, my dad collected cars and like cars were such a big part of our life. So I was like brushing up on all my car facts and I really like, I wanted right. to impress right. Jay yeah. Leno with some of my car knowledge. And of course I <laughs> Did you wear denim? <laughs> he was absolutely wearing a <laughs> denim button down. I remember very clearly, but um, yeah, that was definitely, that was a bucket list and it went no, so incredibly well and so much work goes on yeah, behind that, the scenes so, so that people don't realize. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Like Ooh. tell people like, like you're going to get Guy Fieri on, on the, on the show and he's on for three minutes, five minutes, whatever. Right. Tell me the second you walk now, I've yes. been on a lot of talk shows, so I kind of know what goes on, but I've never been on a, uh, a late type night talk show. Yeah. So well, wouldn't that one start with the pre-interview even before you show up? Oh my God. Yeah. You you know, I once I I have to find it, but at one point I, I I did a blog on how many hours it takes to book a client on television, and this is specifically for a food right. segment. It was twenty three hours. Twenty three hours, 23 of, hours work. of work to get, and that's a not even an accurate number because you had years of experience to even get you to the point where you could do the twenty three hours. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean it's it's pitching the idea. It's you know, no one says, hey, yes, right away. Right. You have to follow up. You have to follow up. And then you have to, um, you know, tr- and then if once they say yes, then finding the date, the back and forth. And then, okay, what recipe are we going to make? And then we need a food stylist. And then it's like the back and forth about recipes and getting approval. And then the, all the phone calls. And then it's just, it's a tremendous amount of work. And that's just on the food side, but then preparing for the for the actual interview, so um, Glenn and I were talking about this before um, because PR people are always want to be as prepared as possible, right? That's it's like ingrained in us, and we want our clients to go on a show, whether it's it, it's a podcast or it's a phone interview. We want them to be prepared, and so of course, if you have a client on in any any show, you want to know what are the questions, how can we practice. Um, Maybe there are questions we don't want them to ask, so which is hard to control in the end, right? In a conversation, but right. yeah. So, but do you practice with Jay before, or you just no? no. Oh, not with him, <laughs> right? But with with the client, just you right. know, we'll run down the questions, and you know, it, each client has a different process. So I have some clients that really want to practice with me, right? They want to run through everything, and then others are like. Psh, I don't even care. No, no, I'm afraid. I got it. I got it. Right. They totally care. It, it, they just don't need to practice, with, I, or they think they don't need to, but sometimes they do. I imagine guys are I got it kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's incredible uh, in interviews. I mean, he you can put him in any situation, and and Andrew's, he's got Andrew it. too. A- Andrew is absolutely the same way. Yeah, I, I've seen him. So in I that can situation. have him on. It could be 
MSNBC, CNN, it could be Sports Illustrated, it could be the I Today Show. It. Right. It, it, we, we could talk politics, right. we could talk food, we can talk anything. Well, Should I think that that goes into um, having that uh, it factor that, that it. gets you to that level of success to begin with. Definitely. So it's funny, talking about preparing, yeah. uh, Rebecca texted me and goes, hey, can we talk about the podcast that we're going to do next week? This was last week. Right. And I expected that text, knowing Rebecca. Yeah, she's got pages and, and notes and, in and, front and, of her. And, and, I said, and I said to her, I said, well, you know me and you know that we're just going to go and yeah. we i had nothing i was no. like yeah. we're just going to go i'm going to see glenn we're going to yeah. put the mics on we're going to go right yeah and it works well for us we're, we are literally the number one podcast in hospitality which is a big deal for us because it it's deal. our industry and everyone listens and this gentleman you know glenn he talks to everybody last week he probably talked to 10 ceos in our business mm -hmm. and so it's really important for me so you know i guess there's some times where i over prepare for a lot of things in my life and there's some things where not preparing is preparing. Right. Mm -hmm. Because being free, and I think one of the reasons the show works is because we have no idea what's going to come out of our mouth and it's very authentic. And yeah. so, someone said to me the other day, like, the new word for 2020 is authentic. I was like, that pissed me off. I was like, <laughs> new you know, word? What are you talking like, about? <laughs> like, 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 oh, well, you know, everything's got to be authentic. Everything on TV and people want authentic. Yeah, everything on TV. I was like, is that, is that, is that <laughs> yeah. new? Like, they, they, you have to be authentic? I, I was told to do that when I was born. So anyway, it's weird. Mm. So let me ask you a question. So podcasting is big right now, obviously. Mm. Everybody, I was just with Randy Zuckerberg again, Mark's sister, and I, we were talking about podcasts, and she said podcasting is, if you don't have podcasts, you're not doing anything. And so podcasting is a big deal. Have you had tried to book anybody on Joe Rogan's podcast? Yes, I have. Okay, so tell me about that. I'm dying and to then, know. I, then try to get us. I didn't get a yes yet. <laughs> he's I'm still big, trying. He's the biggest thing out there right now. In fact, just two weeks ago, I won't say which client, but this client wants to be on that podcast, and this client rarely says, I want to do X, Y, or Z. Right. So I'm like, I'm taking this shit seriously. I've got to make this happen, and I haven't been able to yet. I'm still trying. Right. I did get a reply, Right. which... You know, for a PR person, the worst thing is when you try and try and, and no nothing. one replies. Right. Um, I think that's bullshit because right. whenever right. we pitch I someone, agree. it's it's Be very respectful. specific. Yeah, because it, it, we take a lot of time and put a lot of effort into it. It's a mutual it. relationship between us, the content creators, and you, in a yeah. lot of sense, of the content providers. Yes. And if we don't have that symbiotic relationship, then we're both screwed. Right. Right. So say no or say, let me think right. about it. Um, you know, to... To be fair, they get so many terrible, terrible pitches. Sure. However, anyway, the answer is yes. Um, recently pitched. I did hear back that said, we're, I'll let you know. We're gonna, I'm gonna pitch this idea, but I haven't heard back yet. Wow. I'll keep and you posted. I, see, 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 now I'm a Joe Rogan fanatic. I listen to him every, every day. And, um, I just see Joe Rogan, like, how he right. gets his guests. This is how he used to get his guests. <laughs> he probably doesn't do it anymore. Um, he looks down at his phone and he says, Hey, you want to be on my podcast? Eh, maybe. All right. Come on. But he's just this week, he's had, uh, Brian Glazer, who's Ron Howard's partner, right? Had him on. He had, uh, Andrew Edward Snowden. Snowden. Edward. Snowden, right? He had him on. You know who he is, right? Yeah. What? Oh, but this guy has, Wild. like, now, so now people don't want to be on the night shows as much as, like, if you asked me, like, if I was pitching myself to you to say, hey, where do I want to be? If you don't get me on Joe Rogan, I'm nowhere. Like, that's mm -hmm. where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But I don't have anything interesting enough to say for two yes, hours to Joe do. Rogan. That's, that's not cool. true. I mean, you, we're you do. here at 56 minutes. You no, could totally, no, yeah. we'll yeah. totally yeah. go two, three my, hours with My him. point yeah. being is, I don't want to be on yeah. Joe Rogan. I'm a fan of his. Yeah, like, I hear you. I, like, I don't want to go and sell anything on Joe Rogan. Right. Like, if well, I, go I to want Joe to challenge Rogan, you there because ahead. you have this incredible podcast. And like you said, you're number one in your category. And... He has a podcast with a tremendous amount of listeners, so it would be amazing right. for you to be on other podcasts to expand your listenership. No, sure, absolutely. But what I'm saying is, like, if I went to Joe Rogan, I would want to go with, like, something that is so focused and so specific that I've done or created that would be, to me, exciting to talk about. Like right now, I'll just sit and talk about me, and yeah, that's exciting to me, but it's not exciting to for, for Joe Rogan. Anybody that goes on Maybe his podcast, I'd learn. I, there's not a time I don't put that podcast on, I don't learn something. I was just listening to it this morning with uh, Glazer, and do, you know like, you know who he is, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so he has created, with Beautiful Mind, he did right. that he show. Right, he's uh, Ron Howard's production uh, partner that created, uh, I'm now I'm blanking. Beautiful the name Mind. Of the company. Yeah. 
and like so many Oscar winning movies. Do you know what he's done for 35 years? I never knew this and I wouldn't mm-hmm. know it unless he was on Joe Rogan. What? 35 years every single week, one day a week, he takes off and he goes interviews people all over the world or anywhere they are or if they can't come to him he goes to them and he just talks to them he doesn't videotape it it doesn't and he doesn't tape it he just talks to them I thought he had a book based on that now he just did a book he just did a book about all those conversations but he never talked about it before he's just really fascinated with human behavior and he goes anywhere to talk to anyone it could be a housekeeper it could be the CEO of a business and that when he was talking, he was out of breath, like how excited he was. Mm. Now, for years, he never put in a book. He never really... The only reason he put in a book was for his children. Right. Because he wanted his children to know this was a big part of my life. Like, I don't yeah, want to die so and you nice. not know that this was like a huge part of Amazing. my life. I don't talk about it. I don't publicly. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't make money from it. Like, I don't talk to you guys about it that much, but it's critical to me. And so, to me, that's fascinating that when you, when you get on a, when you listen to someone, whether it be Late Night or, or Rachel Ray, what fascinates me about Rachel Ray is she has been doing the same thing forever, and every time I put it on, it's always different. And I find that fascinating. So, anytime I put it on Joe Rogan, I always find I, I can learn something. And kind of like this podcast, Clint. No, yeah. I, I have to say, what, Anyone can listen to this podcast and, and learn, mm-hmm. right? So it, it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in. You're, there are takeaways like how to be a better leader, how mm-hmm. to be a great manager, mm-hmm. how to be a great a boss, and, regardless of your level. And he's figured out something that yeah. I find fascinating. He's figured out how to talk about the most controversial things and not get nailed to the wall. He'll talk about – because it's never really – one of the things I found – um, about him is he never he has an opinion but he's so open minded about everything that he'll listen and one of the things he said this morning and, that, and I've learned to do that um, is like he lets people talk he lets people just like Andrew Snowden he literally it's a two and a half hour podcast I think I think he said Maybe he asked the guy three questions. Maybe in the whole two and a half hours. So he's open minded. He's a nicer person because of it. Like I just, I'm, I'm just learning to be a better interviewer and a better um, creator because of of, of his podcast. Mm-hmm. And I think on the late night shows or the morning shows, the one in particular that I've been on many times, you don't really get you don't really get to be who you are. Like no, like I've never been on a talk show where somebody's really got to know who I am. Ever. Because you have three seconds. Yeah, Yeah, I was going to say, you don't have... And actually, being on a podcast, it it allows you to, like... Tell your story in a different way. And Anthony, that's why it takes so long for uh, these people to create that segment because you only have those three to five minutes. It has to be highly scripted in the sense mm-hmm. of knowing from how to get from point A to point B yeah. to point C and end the sort of thing. When we sit down with people or Joe Rogan sits down with people, the goal of it is to get them comfortable so then they start talking about things that they may not have expected to be talking about at the second that they sit down and to be open and honest where when you're on a TV segment, segment on TV while you're quote unquote honest in, in, you know, quotes, it's not nearly the same type of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And clients are often, right. I guess they're, they're judged on how, how well they carry that segment. Can they get to the end of it? Can they keep it moving? Can you get from point A to Z? Right. And that is a whole particular skill set that people don't even realize is occurring. You know, Oprah, I heard her once say, no matter who they are, what CEO they are, how rich they are, how famous they are, the first question they always ask me when they get off the show is how they do. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I realized I probably do it with you every single time. I probably do it with you the first yeah. 100 podcasts. How they do? Did I, was I okay? So it's true. But I would say this. I think they're a little too scripted. I think they're a little too – because I've been in situations where it's like – I'm like, this is, this is insane. Right. Like it's so – Boom, boom, boom. And then watch it back. And like, it looks better than what it feels like. Yeah. But it, I think, it would, I think the, especially the morning shows, I think there would be, if they would just have less segments with a little bit more like authenticity. That's just I my totally opinion. agree. They try to cram too much, too many talking points into right. a certain time frame. And well, that's what we did together was that we had a two bedroom suite that we were doing on today's show. Mm-hmm. And I had to talk about security, bed bugs, bathroom, yep. shower curtains, that was phones. the best. The sh- <laughs> and, and you look, you had to make sure you went from vignette to vignette. 
right. to to make sure you got the job done. Right, and I wanted it. And, and you Hoda, did. And Hoda is amazing. She wanted, I think I was supposed to go to the phone and do something, and she was like, Anthony, get over here. It's like she's yelling, right. get over here. It's like, we're, we're in the bathroom now. Um, but I, and, and that was great, but I remember once I was on vacation in August, and I don't remember if it was a travel channel publicist that called me. I think it was. And she said, can you be on today's show tomorrow morning, Saturday, Saturday, right. or tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.? I said, absolutely. So where are you? So don't worry where I am. I'll be there. So I drove five hours wherever I was. I get there. And I, I was maybe, it literally felt like it was three seconds. It was Al Roker. And Al Roker didn't know where to, how to push the map thing that we were doing or whatever. And I remember when I was done with that, I got back in the car and I was just like, I have, I don't even want to see it. I don't want to watch it. And I watched it and it worked right. out, but it was like a minute. Ugh. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. And those are things, I, you know, that wasn't me um, in that segment, but there, there are things we just can't control. And right. sometimes, you know, the, the guest will, bef- before you, will go over and take up your time. And in fact, I did have a client at the Tonight Show right. two weeks ago and a very famous actor went on and on and we were bumped. Like oh, we were the in the worst. green room oh, no, ready to go no, on and think horrible. about all the prep that went into it. Yeah. We had to leave because that actor went on and on and took our spot. I mean, we're, we have a new date in right, November, but still. but still. So you wasted the, all that energy, all that time. Oh my God. You know what, what a- the client was like, that's cool. I totally get it. Yeah, it is what he it was is. was like, it- I'm super fine. Yeah, wow. and, that, and that's great. And that attitude is like everything. That. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that really ingratiates you to people too. Yep. that they want to help get you back. Yes, so to- it's, to- it's very true. Talking about Mark Summers before, he has one of the most iconic episodes ever on the Tonight Show. Do you remember that? Did no. you ever hear of it? I don't know. He was he was it was young. He was young in his career. He was on Double Dare, and he was on Jay Leno. I think it was Jay Leno or Carson was it? Car- no, it was Jay Leno. And um, Burt Reynolds was before him, and Burt Reynolds did his segment. And right. go go look at it; it's online. It's fantastic. And um, so Mark gets on again. Back in the day, before podcasting, and everything else, getting on Leno. Well, that was show, yeah. You have like the one you, shot, and like all the other comedians are jealous. So this is a big right. deal. Like right, he's on yeah. TV, and anyway, so he that, not that he's a comedian, but he's he's a host. So he sits down, and Burt Reynolds is sitting in the second chair because he just moved over. And as he's talking to Jay Leno, right. his back is to Burt Reynolds, which everybody's back is to the second guest because that's how it's set up. So, I don't know, some question happened, and Burt Reynolds said, are you always going to talk, you know, you're talk to me with, you know, with your back towards me or whatever? And he poured a glass of water into Mark Summers' lap. Literally through water. You go, go Google it. It's fun. Wow. You'll see it. And then so what Mark Summers, as he's talking to him, he grabs the pitcher of water and throws it on Burt Reynolds. And this is real. This is a whole real. There's almost a fist fight on Jay Leno. And it's, it's one amazing. of the most famous, most viewed segments ever. And even though it went sideways, um, he made the most of his two minutes, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. And I never asked him this. Next time I see him, I'm going to ask him this. Like, how'd you have the balls? To like throw a pitcher of water, Burt Reynolds probably wasn't thinking about it too much. Yeah, it's like <laughs> this is my moment. Don't don't try to steal it and yeah, take it was, that. It, it, was, it was great. It, it, it's very rare that the, the things like that happen on those shows because they're so scripted. <laughs> what what what's like if you were going to retire tomorrow and close the shop tomorrow? What's the one thing you would miss? If you were going to call it a day and say, you know what? I'm going to just grill stuff with my, uh, Working with my husband. With great but, people like you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, well, actually, Thanksgiving's coming up, so I'm looking forward to your Instagram with your turkey thing in the middle of your driveway. I can't yes, wait. Yes, deep fried turkey. <laughs> um, I would, I would miss like the day to day energy and connections. Right. It's just from whether it's w- with my team or, or my clients. Mm-hmm. What's just the that feeling of, ex- of like, Accomplishment and excitement. You're alive. Um, I, I want. I want to know. Uh, I want to know some s- stuff a- a- yeah. as well. I keep thinking about our audience that's listening to this, and I keep thinking about um, folks that want to have a little bit more visibility in their lives as well. Maybe you could give us some basic hints on how you could create um, that package of yourself so that you could be more presentable to create whatever image it is that you want to have out there yeah. in the universe. Um, it's so important to to really dig deep as to who who you are, and and try to be 
the best version right. of yourself you're a, and the not, most authentic self that you yes and no I, I don't want to over i just i really believe in that it's authenticity so i don't want right. to overuse the word but when you try to be someone it's okay. else it's a new word we just, <laughs> it's just right. invented <laughs> when you try to be someone else you will right. fail right so if you go on That's tv right. and you're like i'm gonna be the next guy fieri or i'm gonna whoever it is that you want to be you can't so just lean into who you are and um Right. And uh, go I, I, with that. Have, did you did you ever have to have like a, not makeover, but where you had to like really think and say, you know what, I'm going to bring my client in and we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. It's like, you need to lean into this and stop worrying about this. Definitely. Yes. To, to dig, dig deep into like, what about that person makes them different than everyone else? And sometimes it's, it's, um, also right. physical, mm-hmm. right? So there have been plenty of clothes makeovers and what it could, sometimes it was makeup and hair and with men and women. And, but right, is that difficult for you to do? Is that no, di- I absolutely love it. And I've always find that, well, it's, it's a hard thing to broach, but once That's you broach it, that person, it's on their mind and they don't know how to ask. So um, I just feel like... That's your job. It's my job. And if you really, if I offend you, then I feel terrible. But so you shouldn't feel terrible. You're trying to do them. You're trying to do them them a service and point out something that is very real. And whether or not they choose to accept reality is not up to you. Right. Yeah, but it's scary. I've had people, of course, that work at the front desk of my hotels, and we have to tell them that you know they have to go home and take a shower. And um, I always take charge of. Very difficult situations, but in those instances, I always give it to somebody else. Cause it's, yeah, it's, well, it's hard. So can you go tell that person they smell because it's scary? Yeah. But I think it's been harder for me with the people that work for me than with clients. Right, right. because That's you have to harder. see them every day. Right, right. Yeah. With a client, they walk they walk away, and you don't have to see them every day. <laughs> That's kind of accepted every day. by clients too. Right, but your team, in order for them to be the best that they can do and be most right. effective, they have to also follow some of those rules. But I, I do want to ask you a little bit more about finding that authentic you, and yeah. uh, you know, what is your voice and how you tap into that. And I see that a lot with um, early days of stand-up comedians, um, kind of drawing the parallel to what you said. They try to be the next so and so, and they try to imitate who that is as a gateway to figuring out what their true voice is. How do you know when to trust who you are is the best you to put out there into the public? Right. Well, when you feel, when you can have a conversation, whether it's with someone in the media or just with your team and it's just, it's effortless and it flows because it is real and it's you, then, then you know you're on the right path. Right. And so you're wondering, well, how how do we do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, for us, it's, we sit down with the client and we ask so many questions. So if you're in the travel business, yes, we're going to ask the obvious questions about travel, but we're going to ask other questions about how you run your business. What kind of mom are you? What kind of, well, we won't say what kind of mom are you, but you know, how are you um, at home and ask about relationships with family and hobbies and other like the lifestyle of a client so we can really learn everything about them and then help them package to be the most unique. Right. You yeah. know, I remember watching again, going back to guy, he was doing some kind of show where he was, um, you won a host job on food network and he was one of the judges. So they're putting people through their paces. I remember. I food remember network star. What is it called? Food, Food Network, Network Star. Star, which is what he won. I was about to okay. say, which is he how he that. became. And he got right. the diner drive ins yes. and stuff. So he was yeah. on Food Network. He was a judge on Food Network Star. And it was before I had my show. And I remember him trying to talk to someone. And this one person that he was mentoring was just not getting it. And Guy walked through and showed him how to do it. And I remember shutting off the TV because I had an idea of my show. And I remember walking, my, the mirror was like the camera, and just walking up and just being me. And I remember that he just said, be who you are and lean in to who you are. And as I walked through my door and then to the mirror and looked at myself and did this, I was like, I can do this. Like immediately knew I can do it because once Guy said lean in, I just leaned into who I was. And I literally, I didn't realize it until we were just talking about it. That was the moment I was like, 
Like, I, I never right. needed anybody to tell me if I was good on TV. I instantly knew in that moment that I would be able to do it. And it also it makes your life easier, doesn't it? was easier, because of guy, it? which is interesting. Right, and it makes your life easier because oh, you if you could be go. authentic to you, you could just be in the moment and you could react and not have to think through so many things. I mean, for me, um, I felt when I finally let myself be me and not worry if people are going to like me or not like me, I found that as a real watershed moment in my uh, ability to push my career forward because I shed a lot of that baggage about um, who I thought I was as opposed to allowing myself to be who I actually am, right? Mm -hmm. And you must see that a lot with clients. And it, it takes time. Take yeah. time well, to know that time. about yourself. Yeah, right. I wish, I, I mean, we can all say this, I'm sure. I wish we understood this in our 20s. Oh, I so wish. <laughs> I so wish. But, but but you need those years to, to really, to, right. under, to go through experiences to understand. You yeah. need pain. At, you, right, you need pain, right? It's, you, and you, and you need, but <laughs> that's I, how you learn. You know, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the book that uh, I'm writing, I, I, I'm going to title it right now. My wife doesn't like the name, but it's How to Fold Your Underwear. <laughs> and that's the working title, How to Fold Your Underwear. Because the moment, the first time in the basic training when the, the TI said I fold my underwear better than everybody else in the, in the squadron was the first time I got confidence. And so I think you have to have little wins where they're little, big. You have to win. And so many people are worried about being successful. And what I try to tell them is like, just take the little wins. Yes. And just breathe that in and and take that. And when a failure comes... Remember your win. But those little wins are just as important as the big failures. Mm-hmm. And I think that we forget that. I'm going through that with my children right now. It's like, you've really been successful in this. You've really been successful in this. Like, and I think that's really this thing that I'm trying to get across to people. It's my little wins are more important to me than my big wins or my big losses. It's incredibly important. And I've been working with my staff on that and even with my kids. So we're all wired to, like, if something negative happens, like, we're stuck in that moment. But think about all the, like you said, the wins throughout the day. And how about rewiring your brain and being stuck in those moments, right? And play those moments over. Take a, take a deep breath and be like, and acknowledge, look what I just did. So how do you and do instead that? instead of moving on well, so be, fast. That'd be nice to... Uh take some time and appreciate the good stuff for a little longer. Yes. So how do you do that with clients? Have you had to talk clients who like off the bridge that maybe failed on TV or, or just, yes. Did, and how do you, how do you broach that? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I had a client who was on the today show, I don't know, two, two or three months ago. And you know, he had some challenging moments on the show and he was really beating himself up. And then he was, you know, I was in a green room with him on another show soon after, and he was focused on what happened today's show. So I said, okay, let's focus on, let's talk about all the amazing things that are happening right now. And we went through several of them. And then we took, we took a few deep breaths, right? To like be in that moment. And he realized, okay, that this is, this is what I need. And it was, he actually tells me it was a defining moment for him. Wow. And, and I mean, what, what could be better? That made me feel so yeah. good. Also that he shared that with me. And then I realized this is what this client needs every time he has a big, whether it's a, a right going before, before a show or whatever it is. Yeah, I remember I had someone I won't name, but way before you, uh, there was a publicist that, um, and that was given to me. I'll just say, it's not something I hired. Um, and every time I was on the show, I was more nervous. Because this person just got me so to the point where I almost lost my temper once in the, in the green room. And I did it because that really who I am. But I almost lost my temper. It's like m- your job is to make me calm, and all you're doing is giving yeah. me agita. Right. That is. That's our our job. For yeah. Sure. I mean, especially in that vulnerable. I remember when, the first time I was on the first show I was ever on was Rachel Ray, and my brother Angel's in the green room, and there's like you know five million people watching. And he goes, "Calm down." And I said to him, "I said, calm down." You mean calm down? As you go out there, don't tell me to calm. It's the worst thing you could have said to me. But anyway, I, th- I think your your job is is so critical to making successful people people comfortable and more successful. Right. I think the people that come to you, because first of all, if you're going to hire someone like you, you're not cheap, right? So you have to have means, and you have to already be kind of built, right? You're not taking brand new, you know, people out of the street and building their career. They've already kind of had some kind of success. Is that correct? 
we are, we do work with some emerging brands, but they're emerging, right? You're right, not right. you're not you're not starting them; they're emerging. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes we have launched businesses, but to, but to your point, yes, you have to be on your way right. as well. And those are the people that are very vulnerable because yeah. they're like they're yeah they're they have this presence and people look at them in a certain way, but there is some vulnerability and that's a tough thing to manage, I'd imagine. Mm-hmm. Because on one hand they're they're strong, but on the other hand they're very vulnerable. Right, right, absolutely. There's there's so much to learn. Okay, so now we're going to come to yeah. the. First of all, have we? Because uh, I, I I feel like I'm nervous around Rebecca sometimes. I would I would so, be too so, far so, you. So 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 have <laughs> we? Very intimidating. Have we? Yeah. Just, have we? Have we lived up to your expectations of this podcast? You absolutely have. Okay. <laughs> So that I've been worried about that all weekend. I lived up to your that's expectation, what, yeah, which is more important to me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we do something at the end of our podcast called "Tell Us Something We Don't Know." So you have such a rich personal life, such a beautiful family, and just you go to the greatest parties, and you're like, you're like, she's like the person I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> like, like you live, like you live the life oh, I want to live. You live the me. life I want to live. So, okay. so. What, so tell us something we wouldn't know. Something completely okay. unexpected. Okay. Um, wow. I would say a lot of people don't know that growing up, my dad raced cars as a hobby and I would go with him to the racetrack. It was the most, I mean, I was, I absolutely, I'm an adrenaline junkie and I would wear like the fireproof suit and I loved cool. speed. And so, I guess to it could be good or bad, but I do everything pretty fast. As a result, I'm a fast walker. I'm a fast driver, and a sure. lot of people don't know that about me. Wow! So, did you ever race cars? I have not raced cars, but Just you've been, been on, a passenger. But you've been on a race track. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. but not driving the car. Right? Have no. you ever gotten a speeding ticket? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> Have you yes, ever talked I your have. way out of a speeding ticket? I think ticket? I consider myself a strategic driver. Right. <laughs> and those PBA cards, and those PBA cards, yes. they work. Oh yeah, yeah. So really? my, my dad was, um, an orthopedic surgeon and he, he, um, operated on a lot of policemen. So he had m- several of them. <laughs> yes. and, you, and he did give them to me, you know, when I was, mm, when I was maybe, uh, one I don't have tickets. one today, but <laughs> maybe you got uh, one or two tickets. <laughs> yeah. One, my, one guy gave me one of those, uh, once and I was so disappointed that I didn't get pulled over in the entire time. <laughs> I had the oh car. My God. I know. I was trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenn, yeah. tell us something we don't know. Uh, my father wasn't a race car driver, but he really loved smoking cigarettes. So, uh, everywhere, and I remember uh, growing up being uh, locked in cars with him smoking cigarettes, locked in the house with him smoking cigarettes, <laughs> and. Oh my uh, God. Yeah, and then me trying to, um, you know, race as fast as I can away from the cancer. <laughs> yeah, my, wow. Uh, I, but back in the day when we were growing up, everybody did Oh, that. it was, wow. it was just My mom was... smoked three packs a day. Oh, wow. And she, she, she passed away, but she would have never admitted that she died of, you know, of, yeah. of, of, of smoking too many cigarettes for many reasons. She had many d- yeah. different diseases when she died. But, uh, that's it. That's well, what, you know, I'm just trying to smoke father too much? risk taker thing, you oh, know. Okay. Yeah, he finally quit, you know, once he got the, uh, once he got the mm-hmm. lung cancer, but, you know, that didn't really help too much. So is it my turn? Uh, sure, Anthony. Tell us something about you that we don't know. You said sure, Anthony. Like I cut you off from no, because I, I was wasn't... trying to save you. I know, and I was. I, I appreciate that because I was trying to dig my way out of this hole. Right, but I you looked myself, at me like but... I did something wrong. Like, Cause, instead no, of trying to save your ass, I was for looking the at you time. like this is why we need video, guys. Uh, uh, I was looking at you like I did something wrong, and I didn't know how to handle. That's it. another thing I want to talk to you about. Yeah, uh, you do video on your other podcast, and you post that shit everywhere. On this podcast, right. there's no video. You barely post about it. What's right. your problem with me? Okay, so I've got a lot of problems with you, but I did bring I did bring some uh, some lav mics today uh-huh. and a uh, and something and the uh, the what's it called the uh, this the stand hey you know uh-huh. so we could we could record some video before we get out of here. Today. Oh really? Yes, I promise you there will oh, okay. there will be some there will video be video recording. Yep. Well, it would have been great if we would video this, but you know what, Glenn. I'm not going to take it personal because I am a completely evolved man. Uh huh. And I am not going to take my insecurities and put them on you. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that. And I have a feeling that it wouldn't have worked out for us to do the whole thing because I only brought one camera with me, and I've got to I've got to figure all that out. Okay. All right, Anthony. So, what do we not know about you? 
Um, you know, we haven't spoken in so long. There's so many things. I know. But there's one moment that Uh-oh. really, it, yeah. actually there's a couple, but I'm going to, there's one that really kind of really spoke to me. Yeah. I was in, um, I'm going to get emotional talking about it, but I was in a, uh, I was in Vegas and I was talking to UNLV mm-hmm. students and these students were students that were on scholarship and their household income is like $30,000. So, mm-hmm. so they really need these scholarships to go to college. And I spoke to 18 of these kids and these kids were unbelievable lights out. Right. They were dressed, appro- they were dressed appropriately. They were focused on me. They were focused on learning and they were just like, you would have thought these kids all came from families that were well to do and they had all the resources in the world. They were just really prepared. They looked like just mentally and physically prepared and ready to work and learn. And I said a couple of things, and one of the young ladies um, asked me a question. She said, what can you tell someone um, that's going into the workforce today, a young person? And I said to her, don't take any shit from anyone. Simple, right? And I mean it because I truly believe in that. And she said later, and we, of course, expanded on that, and we went through examples. And at the end, she came over to me with tears in her eyes, and she says, I'm leaving my job, my part-time job, because of you. And I said, whoa. She goes, because I'm taking shit and I'm not going to take shit from anybody anymore. She goes, I awesome. think you just, you just set my, per, like you changed my, you changed my direction because I'm a pleaser and I tried to please everyone. And I realized when you said those words, like you really meant them. And that moment really helped me because I was like, you know what? My words matter. And when people ask me those questions, they're really looking for guidance. And sometimes like I'll do throwaway comments that I don't really think too much about. And that just made me reflect and say, anytime I'm asked a question, I'm going to ensure that it's just not a throwaway comment because people are really, it's going to resonate with people. Yeah. So that was really powerful for me. Yeah, that's really a lot powerful. And uh, thanks for shaming me with with my story. (laughs) I know Glenn and I are looking at each other like, okay, what other stories can we tell? (laughs) Well, you can tell us one story. You can tell us how we can uh, find you, find the agency, all of that kind of good stuff. Sure. Um, Our website is www.brookspr.com. And my Instagram is at brook at one. And our company Instagram is at Brooks PR. Great. Right. Yeah, and if you want to see great food mm-hmm. and you want to see a great lifestyle, look at her Instagram. Right. She's like a rock star. <laughs> Excellent. Anthony, how can we find you? Anywhere you want to be on the internet at Anthony Hotels. And I am, of course, uh, at Traveling and Glenn. I want to thank everybody for listening to another episode here of Checking In with Anthony and Glenn. Be sure you send, drop us some notes. Let us know what you're thinking out there. Tell us what you thought of this episode and what you... Uh, what you want us to do? In I have a the feeling future. this is going to be a two-part episode. Uh, We're going to have Rebecca on again if she wants to be. Oh, I hope oh, so. good. I'm, I was hoping you wouldn't say I should split this into two because after the big controversy that we had last time, I tried to split an episode into two. It nearly, it nearly tore us. So let's ask Rebecca if there's a podcast that's two hours long, like this one's an hour and a half, I think. Yes, an hour twenty-five right now. Okay, should we split it or should we just have one long podcast? Mm. Well, I would say if there are topics in the podcast that can be cut into two than to to cut it but if not yeah. one what's uh, i'm sorry we're coming back to the show because <laughs> i i didn't ask this question <laughs> what your 25 years ago pr was different than it is today wildly different explain that Oh my God. <laughs> wow. You've well, got eight it makes, seconds. It makes me no, feel really old. That. We're not in the rush. We used to pitch on the phone. Our, everything was done on the phone and we, we were doing things by fax. I still remember the fax number for Good Day New York. What is it? 4523618. I don't know if it still is, but I, I, there are things, everything was done differently. And is it better, worse, or just different? Just different. Yeah. Is it easier? Because of of technology today than it was back then? No. Um, Do you have more outlets, though, today than you did back then? Yes. But do you have more? It doesn't mean it's better. It doesn't mean they're better better or people will care about the fact that there are more. Yeah. It makes it... It makes it harder in a lot of ways. When you, I know one of the things that I've been told is like you don't have your social media following is not big enough because I've never really focused on it. I have a hundred thousand people across my social media platform, which is nothing. One of the things when someone asks you to get on a show or a podcast or whatever, do do first thing people ask you is, well, how big is your social media following? Yeah, absolutely, it's important. It's very important. 
it's and um, I got to do better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> no, all got to do better. It on helps that. people get yep. not only on shows, but if you know your agent needs them to sell, like try to sell a TV show, to sell a book. I mean, it's it's it is really important. And a lot of times when people come to us and they have a very small following, and they're not known, um, we we say, you know what, invest some money and really work on your. Mark, social media marketing and then come to us right because whereas before it's like i'll make you a star now it's like you got to be a star before you get there you have to kind of have a you have to have a following before you get there yeah yeah it's crazy so that's a big difference mm-hmm. right tremendous yeah but can you imagine pitching on the facts on what well, on facts facts yeah. sending pitches through yeah. the fax machine that's crazy it's crazy yeah. i know as a journalist it's much easier to ignore emails and it is faxes <laughs> yeah there was, it's funny that about a year ago there was a show that was about to get greenlit about me and all of a sudden the show went away and i'll bet you a hundred dollars was because my social media following wasn't big enough <laughs> have five million people watching me on tv but i didn't have you know right. a yeah. million social media followers yeah. no well but anyway so um let's wrap it up Greg. yeah all right we're gonna <laughs> For wrap the second up. time I know, this is this is great we're gonna really wrap it up this time but if you guys listen to the show you know we have trouble wrapping up the show the first time <laughs> usually takes us two or three attempts i'm feeling pretty confident about the end of this one so for rebecca anthony and myself thanks for checking in it's checking in with anthony and glenn teaching you to be the hotel you're that you wanna be. It's checking in with Anthony and Glenn.